uh, you'll feel better, you'll feel higher, you'll feel like you have more energy, you'll be motivated with those around you. Whereas when you're in another country, for example in this country, in the days of Tul Hijjah, you won't notice any difference. Why? Because everyone is going about their daily life. Everyone is going about their day-to-day -day work as though it is a normal day. However, these days are very virtuous. They are in fact the most virtuous days throughout the year. And we need to ensure that we make the most of this time. So first and foremost, one of the most important things that we need to do, or one of the most important things that we need to try and do, is to fast in, on the ninth day, on the day of Arafah. Why? Because there is a special reward for those who fast on the day of Arafah. Keeping in mind that fasting on the day of Arafah is for those who do not go to perform Hajj. So those who perform Hajj, they do not have to fast on this specific day. However, those who are not performing Hajj, for them it is very virtuous or very beneficial to fast on this day. Why? Because Rasulullah says that you will be expiated. Your sins will be forgiven for the previous year and the year to come. So how many? Two years of sins will be forgiven. The previous year and the year to come. Now when it comes to regarding which sins will be forgiven these will be the minor sins so any minor sin that is committed or will be committed it will be forgiven if you were to fast on the day of Arafah for some of us the day of Arafah will be Tuesday for others it might be Wednesday however there is a difference of opinion but that is minor there is nothing uh, there is a lot of scholars on either side of the argument so coming back to the importance of fasting on the day of Arafah when we fast on this day, Rasulullah mentions that the sins of the previous year will be forgiven and the sins of the year to come will be forgiven as well. Meaning that the sins that we haven't committed yet will also be forgiven. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informing us of the virtue of this specific day. So we have to ensure that we make the most of this time. We try and give charity. We give more charity in these days. Why? Because Rasulullah has said in another hadith that no action is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than those done in these 10 days. Why do we say these 10 days? Because the day of Eid is included in it. It is the day where we celebrate. We celebrate the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he completed the deen. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت yeah, this is the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed on the day of Arafah. And it was the day or it was a sign to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed this deen and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has completed his duty or his message. Meaning that the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was coming to an end. So on this day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave a very important khutbah, a very important sermon. And from the sermon, he mentioned a few things which I would like to speak about. First and foremost, he spoke about protecting one another, protecting human life. Meaning that it is very important for us to ensure that we do not harm one another, specifically in these days. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran that there are specific times or there are specific months where certain things are haram. And from those months, we have Dhul Qaeda and Dhul Hijjah. So in those months, in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions to stay away from war, to stay away from fighting. Keeping in mind that this was the time in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions, they were being harassed, they were being oppressed, they were being tortured, they were being punished by the kuffar. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them and he instructed them that these are sacred months and in these months we do not engage in bloodshed. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions, they listened and they followed these instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of the khutbah, in part of the khutbah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions about ensuring that we give our zakah on time. That we ensure that whatever rights we have on other people, we fulfill them. So when we have to give our zakah, we ensure that we give our zakah in a timely manner. We do not need to delay our zakah. There is nothing in Islam where it says that you have to give your zakah collectively after so many years. You give your zakah every single year. Whether it is a small amount or whether it is a big amount. You have to give your zakah every single year. And the importance of giving your zakah 
is that when someone passes away, if they have not given their zakah, the first thing that is done before their wealth is shared out is you have to give your zakah. Whatever zakah that was due, you give it out. That is the importance of zakah. Moving on, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned protecting the women folk. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his final sermon, he made it very important and he made sure to bring this point to say that protect the women. Protect the women folk and do not take away their rights. Do not steal their rights and do not take away from their haqq. Meaning that whatever rights the women folk have upon us, we should ensure that we do our best to fulfill these rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain rights as humans. And then he has given certain rights to men and he has given certain rights to women. And as men, you have certain rights over your women folk. When I say certain rights over them, meaning certain responsibilities that you have to fulfill. So you have to ensure that you do not take from their haq, you do not take from their money, you do not take from their wealth. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a system and we have to ensure that we follow the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Why? Because it is following the teachings and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the best from amongst you is the one who is best to his family, to his wife. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam completes the hadith by saying, and I am the best to my wives. Meaning that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always fulfilled the rights of all the women that he was given responsibility over. So we have to ensure that when we have women folk in our family, when you have spouses, when you have daughters, when you have mothers, ensure you fulfill their rights. They might not be able to work, they might not have a certain amount of money. It is your responsibility to ensure that all their rights are fulfilled. And coming on to the last point, and one of the most important points is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about discrimination. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about the equality of us Muslimin. We do not hold as Muslimin, we hold a certain value of being Muslims. However, amongst us as Muslims, we do not hold any value over the other. So whether you are Arab, whether you are Asian, whether you are European, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your skin color. He does not look at your creed. He does not look at your culture. He doesn't look at what tribe you may come from. The only thing that matters is your taqwa, your God consciousness. That is the only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at. And the only superiority you might have over one another is in your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only thing that you can look at when it comes to seeing the virtue of one over the other. So when we look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a virtue over all the other prophets, peace be upon them all. And when we look at the companions, they have a virtue over all of us. Why? Because they were blessed with the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, all of them hold a certain virtue and that virtue being that they were in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if there was a man who was a Muslim in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yet he did not get to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or he was not in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will not be regarded as a companion, he will not be regarded as a sahabi. Why? Because he did not get the virtue of being in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in the same way, we as Muslimin, the only virtue we hold over one another is in our closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the beauty of this is that none of us know how close we are or how close the other is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person sitting on your right and the person sitting on your left, you do not have any idea of how close they might be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not know whether this person was involved in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the whole night. Right? So we cannot clearly say that I am better than such a person in taqwa. Why? Because we do not know the relationship that that person has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the beauty of the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we do not hold virtue over anyone else besides in our closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at others, when we look at others and we look at the wealth that they might have, or we look at the beauty that they might have been given, or the virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. These are only things that you can see. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you certain virtues. 
that you might not realize or that you might not appreciate. So you have to always look within yourself and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you in ways that you cannot even comprehend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so many blessings that you would never ever be able to return the favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those of us that have good health, we do not understand how difficult it is for those who have certain health conditions. You will never understand that pain. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with certain things that He might not have blessed others. And in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting you through certain tests, certain trials that He might not have placed others in. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this act or this test that I'm putting this believer through, it will be a means for him to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we have a test or when we have a gift, if through this test or this gift we come out closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then indeed it was actually a virtue and it was a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was a means for us to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the same way if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with something and that something takes us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then was that actually a virtue was it a gift or was it actually some form of punishment why because he might have given us wealth and that wealth took us away from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might have given you a business and that business might be so successful that now you do not have time to perform your salawat in the masjid how much value is that business to you then if it keeps you away from your responsibilities of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which brings me on to my final point and a simple gentle reminder that I would like to give all the brothers and sisters is that on the day of Arafah if you have the ability and if you have the means to fast if you have the time and you have the ability to take the day off if that will make your life easier and it will make it easier for you to fast then try your level best to fast on this day why because fasting on this day will expiate your sins for the previous year and the year to come so try your level best to fast and for those of us that might not be able to fast you can try and involve or engage yourself in the reward of those who are fasting by helping out those who have fasted. How do you help them out? You can help them out in any which way. Helping them out with their work and one of the best ways to help them out is to help them out with the breaking of their fast. So for example, if the masjid is having an iftar, you can help in sponsoring that iftar because that way all the people that fasted, when they break their fast with that iftar, you will be engaged in the reward that they will receive from this fast keeping in mind that it will not take any reward away from them at all so try your level best to fast and if you cannot fast then try and engage in trying to achieve some sort of reward from those who are fasting by helping out in actions or by helping out in giving them uh, means to break their fast. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all our shortcomings and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to engage in extra istighfar in these blessed days. Ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.